In statistics, we will gather a sample of data and then use the information from that sample to make estimations about the entire population. For example, if we wanted to guess the average weight of Americans, it would be impossible to weigh every single American and then record all of their weights and find the real true average of Americans. Instead, we could get a sample of Americans, weigh that sample, and then make a really educated guess about the entire country. Now, we do get a point estimate for what we think the average is, but it doesn't make much, much sense to just give one single number. We can be a lot more confident if we give a range of numbers. And the bigger range we give, the more confident we will become. If based off our sample, we got a point estimate for the average weight to be 190 pounds, well, there's no way that's exactly right. But if we got an integral anywhere from 180 to 200 pounds, that the average weight somewhere in there, we'd be a little more confident that that range contained the true average. As we expand that range, if we expanded it all the way to 150, all the way up to 240, that the average weight was somewhere in there, we could be even more confident that our interval contains the true average weight. Page 439 of the textbook shows how to use technology to create confidence intervals for population proportions. I'm going to work through an example showing how to do it with StatCrunch. If you prefer to use a different method of technology, refer to page 439. In a trial of 300 patients, so we have a sample of 300, 300 patients, they receive a drug and 42 of them reported that they had a headache. First, we want to obtain a point estimate for the population proportion of patients who are going to receive the drug and have a headache. So for a proportion, we need to take the number that reported the headache and divide by the total that there were. So 42 out of 300, what proportion is that? It's 0.14 or 14%. Next, we're going to construct a confidence interval, but to do that, a few requirements need to be met. If you look on page 432 of the textbook, it explains the requirements at the bottom of this box. Your sample size multiplied by your point estimate percentage, and then also one minus that needs to be greater than or equal to 10. And also your sample size needs to be less than 5% of the entire population. So if you do 300 times our 0.14 and then also 1 minus 0.14 which would be 0.86 we need this to be greater than or equal to 10. It is. And also 300 people is definitely less than 5% of the entire population so that criteria is met as well so we can go ahead and create a confidence interval. In StatCrunch you want to go to Stat we're dealing with proportions here and we just have one sample of data. Now if you have all your data listed in a column here you would choose with data but if you have the summary stats such as the number who reported the headache then you do with the summary. So our number here our success is reporting the headache so our number of successes is 42 out of the 300 patients. And we're doing a confidence interval, so be sure to select the confidence interval radio button. And let me scroll up. You don't need to mess with this drop down, but make sure this lists the confidence that you're looking for. And in our problem, it says we want 99% confidence in our interval. So we may make our interval a little bit wider so that we can get a little more confident, but we'll be very, very confident. So when you compute that, it gives you the lower limit and the upper limit of your confidence interval. And you'll notice that your sample proportion, 0.14, is right smack dab in the middle of those two numbers. So we come back, enter, make sure you round to the correct number of places. Here is our confidence interval. 
and it's completely centered around our point estimate here. 0.14 is right in the middle. So what does this confidence interval mean? We can't really talk about the probability that the population proportion of people who get a headache, we can't talk about the probability of it being between these two numbers because it either is between or it's not in there. So it's either a 0% or a 100% chance of being in this interval. What we talk about is the confidence in our method here. We are 99% confident that when we take samples of 300 people and, perf and perform these calculations to get a confidence interval, 99% of the time this interval will actually contain the true population proportion of people who get a headache. So do this experiment 100 times, 99% of these intervals will, will contain the true proportion. One of those intervals out of 100 will not. I'm going to quickly walk through what's going on behind the scenes. I definitely hope you use technology, but I think it helps to have a little bit more understanding of what the technology is doing. We always want to start by getting our point estimate. Our confidence interval is going to be built around that estimate. The point estimate's right in the middle. So 42 out of 300 gives us our point estimate of 0.14. Now, depending on how confident you want to be, and your confidence interval, it will determine the critical value. The distribution for sample proportions is normal. And so what we do with a 99% confidence interval is we want to find critical values to make our interval wide enough to cover 99% of the normal distribution. And so that means we have 1% out here in the tails. So we're going to make our confidence interval wide enough to cover 99% of the normal. So if you want just 1% in the tails, that's 0 0.005 in each tail. And Excel will tell you what that critical value needs to be if you use this formula. It gives you the negative version. We actually want to use the positive in, in our formula. So it gave you this critical value, the negative. We actually want to use the positive in the formula. Page 432 shows what you want to do to calculate the standard error here. Use that formula. Use your point estimate times 1 minus that point estimate, which is 0.86, and divide by your sample size. Take the square root of all that. And then your margin of error, which is how wide you're going to build that confidence interval centered around your point estimate. You want to take your critical value and multiply by that standard error. And in my formula, I actually multiplied by a negative one because we have our negative value here. So I want to make that positive. And it talks about that on page 433. But when you multiply those two values together, you get your margin of error. And so all we do then, we know how wide our interval is. We add it and subtract it from our center point here, our point estimate. So you subtract it, you get the lower bound, you add it, you get the upper bound of your confidence interval. And because we used this critical value, we are 99% sure that the true population proportion of people who get headaches is somewhere within this interval. For the entire population, it could be that 14% of people get headaches but it's not likely that we were exactly right from our sample. But we're 99% confident that somewhere between a little bit more than 8% and a little less or a little over 19%, somewhere in that range is the true proportion of people who get a headache when they use this drug. When dealing with confidence intervals for population means, we need to use the T distribution. And it's pretty similar looking to the normal distribution. There's just more data in the tail. So it's symmetric, the means right in the middle. So it goes off equally to both sides, but it's more spread out in the tails. And page 443 talks about the T distribution. Stat crunch can also be used to create confidence intervals for means. You go to stat, since we use the t-distribution, you go to t-stats, one sample, 
If you have a column of data, you do with data. Otherwise, with summary, and you enter in the values here. And I'm just going to make these up. So you enter in the sample mean, whatever, whatever the sample standard deviation is, and whatever the sample size is. I just made those up. Make sure you click on confidence interval, and then enter whatever your confidence level is. So I'll enter 0.99 for 99%, and then hit compute. And it gives you the lower limit of your confidence interval and the upper limit of your confidence interval. And so I'm confident that if I gathered a lot of samples of size 250, did this process over and over, 99 out of 100 times when I create this confidence interval, the true mean of the population would be somewhere within that interval. Only one time out of 100 will I create an interval and the actual true mean is either less than the lower limit or it's larger than the upper limit.